Hey guys, it's Miss Franz, the Amana art teacher, and I'm here today to show you a little bit about crochet, what it is, how it works, and show you a little bit about Esperanza's blanket. So this is the first few rows of the blanket from the book. I worked on that today, and you can see that it makes an up, down, up, down, or a zigzag kind of pattern. Here's the mountains, here's the valley. Mountain top, and that's the beginning of a valley. I didn't go long enough for them to make too many mountains and valleys. So let's talk a little bit about crochet. Crochet is a yarn art that uses special tools called hooks. You can see why it's called a hook because it's got the curved end that's supposed to grab the yarn. There's lots of different types of hooks. They come in all sizes. There's ones that are even bigger than this and there's ones that are even tinier than this one. And they're for yarn. So I've got a variety of yarn here. A big thick yarn would need the big needle skinny little tiny yarn would use the small needle but this is the size <laughs> that I'm going to assume that most people were using because this is what we consider to be normal sized yarn and this is a normal sized hook so this is the kind of thing that I expected Esperanza and her grandmother were using and I'll show you a little bit about how we start crochet Crochet starts with a loop, you go around your fingers, and you pull through, and you can see it makes a little knot. Now this is called a slip knot because if you pull, it just slips back out. So I'm going to do that again. Make my knot, and come through. So in the book, Abuelita says that it's 10 counts up and then you add one and then it's nine down and you skip one. But you have to start with something called the chain first. You have to make the base or a foundation for it. Otherwise, you don't have anything to put your stitches on. You have to build from the foundation. So since I know I need to do at least 10 and 9, I know I need to have at least 20 stitches at the bottom. To make this the right size, or to make it the same size as the other one, <clears throat> I'm actually going to do twice that many and do 40. So let me show you the first 10, and you can watch and you can see that the hook is going to grab the yarn. One, so I'm twisting it a little bit each time. You grab the yarn with the hook, pull, or I'm sorry, twist, and pull through the loop, and that makes a bunch of new little loops. All right, so here is a finished foundation, a chain of 40 stitches. 
And you can see it actually looks a lot like a braid, doesn't it? But then when you look at the back of it, it's got these little bumps on it. That's where you would be putting your stitches. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. The first row in any crochet project is the hardest row. It's the one that's the most difficult to do. I'm going to zoom my camera in a little bit and see if maybe that will work out more when I'm working with this so you can watch. So she said do 10 stitches. See, it's kind of hard to push the needle or the hook through. So here's one crochet stitch. Now two. three, and again, the it's hard to get that crochet hook through that little loop right now. So there's four, five, six, See, I mean, it's difficult and you can get lost, lose track, but I know this one's seven, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then what did she say on the ten stitch for the top of the mountain? you add another one. So you add another stitch right next to that other one in the same spot. Now I'm going to go down nine and skip one. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And what do we do at the nine one? She said you skip one. So I'm going to skip that jump. Or that bump. I'm gonna start the next 10 on this one. And then when you skip one and you pull it together, it makes a little V going down. So let's finish this row. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh oh, it's gonna be a little one. If you don't make your stitches, the chain, the foundation, the same size, it makes it hard to work with them. Nine. And it makes it hard to work with them because if they're too small, you can't fit your hook into the stitch. And if they're too big, then they just flop all over the place and they come off your hook. I've been doing this for a couple of years now, so I have some experience. Now you can see and the yarn is very curly. It wants to wrap around it. So you can see the beginning of the zigzag. We've got a valley, mountaintop, valley. And I just did a mountaintop. So this last one's going to be a what? It's going to end up being a valley at the end. So I'm just going to go straight down this one. There we 
go. And push and grab and pull through. So you saw that the chain or the foundation a few minutes ago was just a straight line. Now, since I've done what's called the first row, we have the zigzag shape starting. We went up, down, up, and down. And if this was a blanket, you would have it a lot wider. Right now I'm just doing this small so you can see little bits of it. So let's look at what happens after a few rows. I'll put the yellow one away and I'll bring out the other one I was working on. So here it is after I've done, I think this is five rows worth. So I'm getting higher on my row count. I only showed you one, but this is about five. So every time I add or I do another row, at the top of the mountain I add one, at the bottom I skip one, and top I add one, and then I don't really have to worry about the ends. And you can see that it starts to make a zigzag shape. So when you get done with this, or when they get done with this, they'd have this whole blanket that would have this up and down zigzag shape. So. Once again, you start and see, because I've been working on this one, this one is a lot easier. I've gotten five rows in and the yarn is easier to work with. The, knee, uh, the hook goes straight through it. Come up and down. Then once again, I get to the top. And I add their stitch number 10 and then one more and that makes another mountain peak. So if I were to just keep going and let's say that I got to a spot and I'm going to come down here. I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to accidentally skip a few pieces. And maybe because I wasn't paying attention when I was working and you can see that it's starting to really get curly or maybe I'll go if I accidentally turn it around like this and I go the wrong way I didn't finish that row and now it's gonna start to look like a really weird crochet project because it's not gonna look nice and even anymore it's going to get all bumpy and it's going to get twisted and, tur and curled in on each other. This is when I unravel it. Right now, all of this, all of this is just made with one piece of yarn. I haven't cut it. I haven't done anything with it. It's just one long piece of yarn. But when I make a mistake, you have to unravel it. You pull the thread and it starts to come back out. And you can see now I'm going back and I'm able to fix some of my mistakes and start over again. I can keep going back into the beginning of this row if I want. So I'll let you in on a little crochet humor on this. When you pull something apart, like if I just kept going with this, it's called frog it. So if you're pulling apart a project, you might say, yeah, I totally had to frog it because you rip it, rip it, rip it. And that's the joke. It sounds like you're saying rip it, but you're saying rip it. You rip it apart. But this is unraveling your project so you can start over or you can start from a spot that you might have messed up. So let's say that I wanted to go back and I can fix it from there. And I can go back and I can keep crocheting through and put the right steps in the right spots.
So I've been crocheting for about five years now. I've been doing this for a long time. I've also been knitting, which is when you use two needles uh, for significantly longer, probably 15 years for that one. So I've got a lot of experience with this, which is one of the reasons why I can do it so fast. But Esperanza in the book is just starting. She's learning how to do it. Uh, I've run the crochet club with Miss Briggs for two years now. And it's a lot of fun to help teach students how to start crocheting. But I understand that they get very frustrated. And sometimes there's um, their projects turn out looking like a bunch of knots and they have to unravel it. They have to frog it. They have to start over again. But once you've practiced, once you've got a lot of time, or once you've put a lot of time into something, you start to get some amazing projects. You can start to do some really cool stuff with crochet. But that's not just for crochet. That's for anything. All right. And I'll talk to you guys later.